going to change gears somewhat, but only somewhat. You're going to see some of the same players, but in different in different contexts. Uh, so indeed, I'd like to discuss proteins, and at the end, discuss the moduli space of proteins. So here's sort of a rough outline no, I should say all of this is joint work with with with, with Yorn. We've spent several years uh, studying and learning about proteins and applying the techniques that are familiar to everyone in the room to this context, and more recently also to, to RNA, as I'll briefly describe. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, this could be the shortest talk ever if I sort of immediately just define the moduli space of proteins and we're done in five minutes, but there would be no sort of insight into the structure of proteins and why this is a reasonable model. So in fact, I'll describe proteins in some detail and then give a combinatorial model, basically a fat graph model for, for proteins. And we've used this for classification purposes to some, with some success, as I'll explain. And then a continuum model, continuum model, of proteins, which leads naturally to, I think, a beautiful pure mathematics definition of this protein modular space. The discussion of proteins, however, is also going to be rather involved. I have sort of a lot to say uh, to set the stage for these other developments. So first, there will be kind of a poetical discussion, uh, then a chemical discussion. All of them are going to be cal discussions. Then a chemical discussion, uh, then a geometrical discussion geometrical discussion, uh, then a dynamical discussion, there really is a lot to say, and then finally an empirical discussion. Okay, so I have sort of a lot to say about proteins, and then I'll carry on with the mathematics, uh, hopefully leading up to this sort of like a beautiful definition. So poetical, here's a bad poem, a bad and inaccurate poem. So I would say, whereas, whereas RNA is the software, is the software, uh, Proteins, proteins are the hardware <coughs> of terrestrial life. So again, it's not I'm not a poet. It's not a particularly good poem, but it sort of puts things in context that somehow the brains behind the operation is RNA, and proteins are what's well, sort of boring to call them hardware. But as one gets into this, they're these little machines that in each of us, and in the tree there, and in the bird, and in every organism. Uh, have these crazy little functions. These are these little kind of uh, <coughs> machines that are operating which, with each breath you take, and maybe I'm being a little more poetic now, with each breath you take, with each motion of your, your eye, which with your moods. These are really the, the chemical building blocks of the function of life. And these are proteins. And if we had time, I would go on and on about various examples of these crazy little machines, but it's a whole wonderland of, of hundreds of thousands of these in a given organism and over the whole of sort of trust your life, millions of these little gadgets, these little machines that are that are operating. So there's my, the, there's the bad poetry. Um, the chemical description, which I guess also could, is, is sort of a bad poem, I give now sort of a definition or at least the first stab at a definition, a mathematical definition for protein. Uh, a protein is a linear, I'm going to have to explain these terms, linear polymer, polymer of amino acids. Okay, so what is an amino acid? Um, an amino acid is a particular chemical compound. Uh, it was the, the sort of cases we're interested in are illustrated here. They, almost all of them, have the same basic chemical structure. C alpha just means a central uh, carbon atom called the C alpha. Uh, there's a, a nitrogen, uh, there's, there's a uh, uh, amine, amide group on this side, NH2, and a carboxyl group, COOH, on this side. Uh, this carbon is wearing a little hydrogen hat, and then there is a residue, R, which is one of uh, well, in this case, 19 different sub-molecules that range from just a single hydrogen atom to a, for, for a glycine to a rather large sub-molecule including something like 19 further atoms for, for another of the amino acids. So there are 19 different building blocks, all that have this same chemical structure that vary only in the chemical composition and, in fact, geometry of this, this residue, so-called residue. So there's always a, an odd man out. 
Uh, 19 of them look like this. There's a 20th called proline that doesn't quite have the same chemical or geometric structure. Uh, it's indicated here, and there is this ring. Um, and it's easiest for us to just pretend proline doesn't exist. It's 5% you know, of the story. And the model that I'll describe, everything I'll describe, is relatively insensitive. It all goes through, so perhaps it's most convenient just to pretend there is not this 20th amino acid. When I say there are 20 amino acids, what I mean is <clears throat> these are the 20 gene-encoded amino acids that, uh, as I'll describe in a minute, combine to give these several hundred thousand machines that constitute you and me and the bird and the tree and so on. So that's an amino acid. It's a particular chemical compound. Uh, there are only 20 of them, uh, as determined by, say, this letter R, or if we're playing the full game, P for proline. Uh, and these gadgets very conveniently and beautifully combine in the following way. Uh, imagine one of these, let's again ignore proline, and imagine one of these next to another, perhaps the same residue type, perhaps different. And you see a CO and the OH, and nearby there's the uh, NH2 on this side. And very beautifully, um, the OH and the H combine and condense off a water molecule. Indeed, you should, we want to think and we shall think of proteins in you and in me and in the tree as, as occurring in an aqueous solution. So water is an ever-present part of the story, as we'll see most especially dynamically later. At any rate, uh, imagine two of these next to each other condensing off this uh, H2O and combining so that this C then bonds to this nitrogen in the next building block. And what results <coughs> in the next page, good deal, is this gap. So here we have, finally, a linear polymer of amino acids. I've dropped the condensed water <coughs> and drawn just the uh, molecules that we discussed in the previous bit, and the residues still just indicated symbolically with, with an R. So in this picture, there are several, so this is uh, polypeptide. Uh, I, I, I guess I really should have said something. Linear polymer of amino acids, and so far the <coughs> definition, is, definition is with certain properties. And I have yet to tell you what those certain properties are. Okay? A polypeptide is simply a, a, linear, a linear molecule, a linear polymer of these amino acids. I'll impose further constraints in a bit in order to, to give really the definition of protein. At any rate, here in a polypeptide, we have the structure you see before you. Certain of the atoms are distinguished in that they determine, in effect, a kind of a broken line segment sitting inside the protein molecule, namely C alpha to the carboxyl C nearby, to the amine nitrogen in the next amino acid, to the next alpha carbon, and so on. So there's, C, there's the sequence C and C alpha, C and C alpha as you move through the protein, and that's called the backbone. So there's a protein backbone. Um, and I'll describe in a moment how realistic or unrealistic is this geometry. But I'm, I'm, I've, I've, drew, I've, drew, I've drawn this in a certain manner, uh, and I'll indicate how realistic is the geometry in a moment. So first of all, there is this backbone of the protein, this kind of broken PL segment running through the the molecule, and I've indicated two particular dihedral angles along this backbone, the, the, called the conformational angles along the backbone in the vernacular, called phi and psi. So let me, it's actually quite useful to anthropomorphize this and imagine I'm a C alpha. So I'm one of these C alpha molecules. Um, I'm wearing my little hydrogen hat. I've got some potentially enormous thing sticking out of my back, this residue. And it goes, uh, it goes uh, C N C alpha C N. So imagine C N C alpha C N. So there are these units coming from the from the combined pair of amino acids, which we'll discuss in a moment. Um, and uh, this this is the picture. There are these angles phi and psi. And I guess I sort of jumped the gun a little bit because there's there's a little more geometry I must tell you to make this more. Pertinent. Let me say it now while I'm standing here in this stupid position and then write it on the board. In fact, um, these, and I'll, I'll put it on the board in a minute, these units, C and uh, C alpha, C alpha, OH, are planar. So in fact, this C and business, there's a plane coming out of my arm. 